Breaking news, guys. Wonder the said shall never cease to window. Nigerians, this will shock you. The reason why Igbo governors and leaders, some of them, are afraid of Namdi Kano's release. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Prospect Channel TV. Thank you for this coming out here. If you're just joining us, please kindly subscribe to this channel and don't forget to give us a thumbs up. If there is one man whose story constantly makes the headlines in Nigeria, it is Namdi Kano. They serve the, 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 the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Ipop. He was rearrested after jumping bail while answering case of terrorism felony, according to the Nigerian government. Following his release on bail on health grants by Abuja Federal High Court in April 2017, Kano later disappeared from Nigeria after the Nigerian army invaded his family home in Afaruko, Ibuko, Umuahia, in October 2017. Several persons were killed, and that was what led to his parents' death. Since then, he had been making incendiary brokers promoting his pet, uh, his project of independence for Biafra. He has formed an army vigilante group, the Eastern Security Network, ESN, which is said was strictly for the defense of the Southeast and South-South against armed bandits, invaders, that is, pastoralist invaders. Kano is original, original offense as charged was treasonable felony, may face more grievous charges over the attacks on security agents and, ins and institutions in the East by armed elements suspected to be acting under his command. This is the, the writer's opinion. Kano was hailed by many for his courage. A lot of Igbos could relate with his separatist agenda because they also feel aggrieved at the federal government's persistent marginalization of the Southeast and its people. The desire to be recognized in the scheme of things in the country. They see no reason why none of their kinsmen is considered good enough to occupy some of the sensitive and lucrative positions in government. More than anything else, they wonder if anyone from the Southeast would ever even be good enough to be president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. These and many more are some of the reasons why the Inam the Kano movement flourished and grew as potentially, especially among the youth. Though Inam the Kano is, uh, in, is in detention, but despite his precarious situation, the man insists there is no going back on the agitation for a Biafra nation. He says what the Igbos want is secession, and he will stop at nothing until this becomes reality. But in the midst of this saga, the following questions have become recurring decima. Where are the prominent Igbo leaders? What is their stand in all of this? Why are they not throwing their weight behind their son, Namdi Kano. Surprisingly, there has not been the kind of opera that one expected would happen. Following the repeated, the repeated calls for secession by the IPOB leader, why a handful of Igbos have been vocalized over the arrest of their illustrious son, Many Igbo leaders and elites have been unusually silent, and many have been wondering why. According to city people findings, one of the reasons for the seeming uh, lack of empathy for Nandikano's continued detention from the Igbo leaders and elites, elites is his knack for showing arrogance and disrespect to the leaders and elders of Igbo land. If there is one thing they all accuse Kano of, it is this lack of respect for them. He said, Nnamdi Kano, according to these elders, does not carry them along in his plans. So, 
they do not hold a prominent place in his scheme of things. He does not seek for their advice, and neither does he consult with them when taking very bold steps that are binding on all of them as Igbos. This is why till today many of the Igbos insist they are not part of his succession plan because as far as they are concerned, he has not involved them and they have no idea how he intends to achieve it. It would be recalled that the APIS Igbo Social Cultural Organization, organizing the Igbo worldwide, also disassociated itself from the activities of the Namdekano led movement. There is also the issue of the lack of trust in Kano's method. Many Igbo leaders and the elite are wary about his methods. They wonder why Namdekano could go ahead to set up the arm wing of the IPOP movement, the Eastern Security Network, ESN, and unleash them on not just the nation's security institutions, but also on the Igbos themselves. Now, majority of Igbos life in fear of the menace of the ESN. They shut down markets, the other people to stay at home and intimidate those who dare to disregard their others and to make things even more complicated. Each time they attack security situation, a couple of lives, usually Igbos, are lost. This has gotten many asking why would a man who claims he is fighting for the MRP section of his people now send armed militants to kill the very people whom he claims to defend. To many, it simply does not add up. Well, this is the writer's uh, uh, opinion. You know, uh, looking at what is going on, uh, majority of Igbo leaders, or can I say Igbo leaders, they do not want to, to leave their comfort zone. And for that, anything can be done to make sure that now they can do not succeed on this. Talking about insecurity in the Southeast, they have leaders, they have governors. Every now and then we hear on non gunmen. And these people, after operating and whatever, you can they can never be apprehended. Why? They have Nigerian army everywhere in the Southeast. So when you look at it, we understand that the initial plan of Namdekano has been trapped by those people who do not want him to succeed, creating more problems for him, so that the government will see him, oh, this man is a criminal. That is just, that is just what is going on in the Southeast. You don't expect these people, you know, who, who, who were watching or who are watching their people, you know, um, to be killed by these uh, Fulani herdsmen, those armed Fulani herdsmen. If you can recall, before Namdekano launched ESN, it was really, really very bad in the southeast. Every now and then you hear how these people, you go to people's farm, you know, with their, with their animals, and when they challenge you, your head is off from, off from your body. Only God knows. They go to people's homes, they do whatever they do to people's wives and children. It was really very bad. It was after Mazinam the Kano launched ESN. Then the Southeast governor said, Oh, we actually need security. Then they launched a babago. So they, 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 so to them, to them, Mazinam the Kano's ESN uh, cannot uh, take over their security because it's like, it's, it's like a big shame. Now you get your state as a governor. You know if you protect your people. You understand? And another person come, come they launch uh, security to protect their people. They went and launched their own. And now the question, that Ebubago, how they take Enda? Anyway, my people, if we enter this matter today, we're not going to finish. Make a drop out for you. How you see within this writer talk concerning the reason why uh, Mazinam the Canons, uh, Mazinam the Cano, uh, uh, leaders, can I say, well, how do I put it? The Southeast leaders do not want Mazinam the Kanu to be released and all that, the reason he gave and all that. So, guys, let's hear from you. Well, I'm dropping it here, guys. What's your take on this?
kindly drop your comment below the comment section.